Well, good morning. It's Father Rob here with Church of the Holy Spirit in Apopka, Florida. It's Monday, June 26, and it's time for morning prayer. Um, and coming to you a little bit earlier than normal, you might have seen that this premiered. Um, we have VBS starting this morning at church, and so I wanted to get down there and meet people before nine. And so I'm recording this early this morning. So, um, but for you, hopefully it's all set up and it's popping on at nine o'clock and we're um, getting settled down and started for our time together in prayer and in reading of the word. Um, as always, um, in the post where you found this video is a list of the scriptures that we'll be going through, as well as links to those scriptures online. There's a link to an online copy of the Book of Common Prayer, if that's helpful. Um, and if you would like to have a physical copy of that and you don't have one, um, let me know. I still have some in the office. You can shoot me a comment um, or send me an email or however you want to reach out to me, and we'll get that out to you. Um, thanks again for joining. Morning prayer again is one of those, uh, one of the two major daily offices, daily offices in the Book of Common Prayer, um, that as part of the Anglican world, and uh, I encourage you to um, stick around and go through this with me. Um, if you have a, a Book of Common Prayer, read along. Um, if you don't and you just want to sit and meditate, that's okay as well. So I'll give about <clears throat> another, well, a few moments for people to sign on, um, about another minute, and uh, then we will get started. As you're settling in, um, we will begin on page 78 of the Book of Common Prayer, and uh, we'll start in just a moment. Okay, yep. <clears throat> well, hopefully we have most um, most of you signed on. Remember, too, that um, if you wanted to recommend this to somebody or maybe this is something um, that you sign on and, and go through later in the day, that's, all, all, um, that's great as well. Um, you can take a link to this video and send it. Um, send it out maybe to your friends, if that, um, somebody that this might be helpful for. Um, or, and I didn't mention this earlier, if you want to take a moment and hit share right now before we begin, um, share it on your timeline and um, maybe somebody will stumble upon it and uh, get a benefit from it. All right, so let us begin. <clears throat> Send out your light and your truth that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, <clears throat> and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. <clears throat> Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. 
He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting. His faithfulness endures from age to age. <clears throat> we have two appointed psalms this morning. Psalm 56 and 57. Psalm 56 and 57 will begin with 56. Have mercy on me, O God, for my enemies are hounding me. All day long they assault and oppress me. They hound me all the day long. Truly there are many who fight against me, O Most High. Whenever I am afraid, I will put my trust in you. In God, whose word I praise, in God I trust and will not be afraid. For what can flesh do to me? All day long they damage my cause. Their only thought is to do me evil. They band together, they lie in wait. They spy upon my footsteps because they seek my life. Shall they escape despite their wickedness? O God, in your anger, cast down the peoples. You have no noted my lamentation and put my tears into your bottle. Are they not recorded in your book? Whenever I call upon you, my enemies will be put to flight. This I know, for my God is on my side. In God the Lord, whose word I praise, in God I trust and will not be afraid. For what can mortals do to me? I am bound by the vow I made to you, O God. I will present to you thank offerings, for you have rescued my soul from death and my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before the God in the light of the living. And now, <clears throat> Psalm 57. Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful, for I have taken refuge in you. In the shadow of your wings will I take refuge until this time of trouble has gone by. I will call upon the Most High, the God who maintains my cause. He will send from heaven and save me. He will confound those who trample upon me. God will send forth his love and his faithfulness. I lie in the midst of lions that devour the people. Their teeth are spears and arrows, their tongues a sharp sword. They have laid a net for my feet, and I am bowed low. They have dug a pit before me, but have fallen into it themselves. Exalt yourselves above the heavens, O God, and your glory over all the earth. My heart is firmly fixed, O God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and make melody. Wake up, my spirit, awake, lute, lute and harp. I myself will waken the dawn. I will confess you among the peoples, O Lord. I will sing praise to you among the nations. For your loving kindness is greater than the heavens, and your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Exalt yourself above the heavens, O God, and your glory over all the earth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <clears throat> Our first reading comes from 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel chapter 2, the first 11 verses. After this, David inquired of the Lord, Shall I go up into any of the cities of, the, of Judah? And the Lord said to him, Go up. And David said, To which shall I go up? And he said, To Hebron. So David went up there along with his two wives, Ahinoam of Jezreel and Abigail, the widow of Nabal of Carmel. David brought up the men who were with him, every one with his household, and they settled in the towns of Hebron. Then the people of Judah came, and there they anointed David king over the house of Judah. And when they told David it was the people of Jabesh Gilead who buried Saul, David sent messengers to the people of Jabesh-Gilead and said to them, 
May you be blessed by the Lord because you showed this loyalty to Saul, your Lord, and buried him. Now may the Lord show steadfast love and faithfulness to you, and I too will reward you because you have done this thing. Therefore, let your hands be strong and valiant, for Saul, your Lord, is dead, and the house of Judah has anointed me king over them. But Abner, son of Ner, commander of Saul's army, had taken Ishbael, son of Saul, and brought him over to Mahanaim, and made him king over Gilead, the Asherites, Jezreel, Ephraim, Benjamin, and over all Israel. Ishbael, Saul's son, was forty years old when he began to reign over Israel, and he reigned two years. But the house of Judah followed David, and the time that David was king in Hebron over the house of Judah was seven years and six months. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading comes from Acts. We begin at verse or chapter 15, verse 36, and continue on into chapter 16. Acts 15, 36. <clears throat> After some days, Paul said to Barnabas, Come, let us return and visit the believers in every city where we proclaim the word of the Lord and see how they are doing. Barnabas wanted to take with them John, called Mark, but Paul decided not to take with them one who had deserted them in Pamphylia and not accompanied them in the work. The disagreement became so sharp that they parted company. Barnabas took Mark with him and sailed away to Cyprus. But Paul chose Silas and set out, the believers commending him to the grace of the Lord. And he went through Syria and Cilicia, strengthening the churches. Paul went on also to Derbe and to Lystra, where there was a disciple named Timothy, the son of a Jewish woman who was a believer, his, but his father was a Greek. He was well spoken of by the believers in Lystra and Iconium. Paul wanted Timothy to accompany him. And he took him and had him circumcised because of the Jews who were in those places, for they all knew that his father was a Greek. They went from town to town. They delivered to them for observance the decisions that had been reached by the apostles and elders. Sorry about that. <clears throat> the decisions that had been reached by the apostles and elders who were in Jerusalem. So the churches were strengthened in the faith and increased in numbers daily. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now the final reading comes from Mark chapter 6, beginning at verse 14. King Herod heard of it, for Jesus' name had become known. And some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead. And for this reason, these powers are at work in him. But others said, it is Elijah. And others said, it is a prophet, like one of the prophets of old. But Herod heard of it, and he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, and bound him, and put him in prison, on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him, but she could not. For Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. And when his, when his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you even half of my kingdom. And she went out and said to her mother, What should I ask for? And she replied, The head of John the baptizer. Immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, 
I want you to give me at once the head of John the, Bapt the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved. Yet out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately the king sent a soldier of the guard with the orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. And when his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> As we continue in our time together this morning, we take a moment to confess what we believe about this great faith of ours. We confess together the Apostles' Creed as found on page 96. Would you please read with me? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you, let us pray. <clears throat> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. And give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Collect this morning comes from the twelfth proper and can be found on page 231. <clears throat> O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our collect for grace can be found on the top of page 100. Would you please pray with me? Lord God, Almighty and Everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you, 
for the honor of your name. Amen. <clears throat> it's at this time we take a moment to offer up our own prayers and intercessions to the Lord. I'll give us about a minute to pray, and then I'll close us in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God and Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for your great blessings that you have extended to us, for the love that you have shown us in this life and the promises that we have for the next. Lord, we give you praise and we give you honor and we give you glory. We thank you for life and for this new day, and for the week that you have laid before each one of us, and for the promise to guide our steps in it. Lord, we pray for peace as we walk through a tumultuous world, a world that is rapidly turning its heart from you, Lord, we lift up our hearts and ask you to guard them, that we may not be distracted from, the, from your path, that we may not be taken in by the things of the world, and that we may um, walk close with you. Lord, we offer up our concerns um, this morning for our, our hearts groanings, for things that we can't even voice. Lord, there are sicknesses, there are surgeries, there are people recovering, there are people that are looking ahead to surgery. Lord, there are those that are I'm on their deathbed, even now, Father. We pray for grace in all of this, that you would attend to each soul, to each body, that you would heal where your healing is desired, and that would you give comfort and peace um, to the infirmities that you call us to bear, and where our hearts are broken and lost and hurting. Lord, would you shine the light of hope and peace and bring us um, into your presence. Lord, we pray for that light to shine into the world and that you would offer hope and peace to all that are around us in our neighbor's cities in the world, that you would bless and strengthen the churches represented here, that they may shine forth your gospel and that more and more people will come to know you and that would you remind us that the simple hope and peace that we have in Christ, that he came for us as well. And that one day we will walk with him in newness of life. We look forward to that day. We look forward to glory. May you remind us um, of the day that we will rise again to walk with you on this earth and a new earth and new heaven that we may be able to stand in your glory without being consumed. We look forward to that day. And in the meantime, give us grace in this life, in this world with all of its troubles. Um, keep us close to you. Help us to walk your path. We ask all of this for today and this week and all of our days. In the name of Jesus, amen. As we finish our time together, we take a moment to pray the prayer of general thanksgiving as found on page 101. Would you please pray with me? Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions, as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all evermore. Amen and amen. Thank you again for joining me this morning. I pray that your day is blessed, that you do sense the Lord's presence and that he is there with you. Um, would you um, just have a wonderful day, have a wonderful week. Remember that the Lord is on his throne. He is in control of all of this. He's making his will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. You can trust in him. So put your cares on him this day and believe in him. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you again soon. Bye now.